folks, we are back for round two of our conversations. I didn't think I was coming back for a round two, but I want to thank uh, the team behind this, uh, headed by Youngmoon, Youngmoon Lee, affectionately called Dr. Lee for his precise and detailed work that he does with us. In any case, we are here for round two. Um, hopefully you found all the videos that were posted in round one somewhat useful for sparking a dialogue within your friends and uh, professional colleagues. In round two, what we want to focus on first is what does this book actually contain, the TOC, Table of Contents. Then we want to talk a little bit about healthy lighting. We touched upon that in round one, but I want to really focus on uh, why we did solarium. It's also featured in the book. And you would think it's completely cuckoo because we did this unfunded by anyone for, and it took years of development, but we had a conviction behind uh, doing this. And we'll get into that. Then we're going to talk about the world of illusion versus the world of allusion, which is an important premise when we're lighting historical buildings. After that, we will move into a conversation discussion on our civic intent and how we can use lighting to impact a change uh, for projects that are in the public realm. So whether it's train stations, airports, bridges, public parks, etc. Onwards to uh, the penultimate conversation, which is the impact of climate on lighting systems. Nobody wants to talk about it because it's a tricky topic. And then we'll end round two with examining how the processes, the manufacturing processes have changed and what impact it has on the lighting industry. You can go to the website as well, contextualizinglight.com and get more information on each of the chapters. But we had a very unique way of, at least in our head, a unique way of organizing our work. You know, we essentially broke it into seven broad segments. And the connection was of that sector, for example, uh, the projects may be connected to just commercial work, offices, etc. That sector has a connection with your physiological psychological and emotional needs. So wherever it connected on your body, we use that as an organizing principle for organizing the book. Of course, some people may say, well, it doesn't just connect with this part of the body or that part of the body, but it's our opinion. And we felt that uh, the organization should be uh, more connected with a deeper meaning on how it impacts us as against just saying, here are our office projects, office buildings that we have built, or public parks, etc. Further than that, got about 63 projects that elaborate on the 18 essays that I have written in the book. The 63 projects that are featured are not there because the images are just beautiful or, you know, the projects are huge, but more so because of the impact that we feel they made on our zeitgeist, on examining the current conditions and how it responded to that. So um, exciting juxtaposition of essays with projects. And of course, uh, you know, a book would not be complete without images. So we have over a thousand images in the book, 424 pages. Overall, got the advanced copies a few days ago. Uh, the book is ready to ship in a month. And it'll be available in, uh, on Amazon at the end of April 2020. Uh, super excited about how it turned out. You know, so big round of thanks to our publishers, um, which is Oro Editions in California, for the stellar, stellar production of what we feel is going to be a benchmark for the lighting industry for decades to come. So thank you for listening. And shortly we'll be back 
with the next conversation, which is on the solarium project.